wanted to talk a little bit about this magnificent structure behind me, uh, the Don of Carloway, uh, which is currently under uh, under a massive scaffolding because there is preservation works being done not in the winter months, so it's kind of abandoned and empty, but I cannot show you the actual structure of it. Uh, the Don of Carloway is one of the oldest and be best preserved Atlantic roundhouses uh, in Scotland. This brock is truly magnificent. If, if, if I will be able to get footage of the, the eastern side of it, it's approximately around 18 meters high, uh, the remaining height. Uh, there is speculation that I might have been a little bit taller, but other archaeologists agree that this is probably its, its maximum height and it was covered with some sort of a wooden uh, structure on the top. Now, what's amazing about these roundhouses is that they are only found on the western coast of the Atlantic. So these, these structures, dating back to around Iron Age period, are solely found in the highlands of Scotland. So, I really find it amazing as it offers a perspective of the local inhabitation and their mindset by the structures they have built. Uh, their use and uh, uh, functionality is still unknown, it's highly debated, but I believe it doesn't really matter. What matters is that if you visit it, you come near to its builder's mentality. and. What better way to understand those people than to stand here and look around you at this harsh, very violent, humiliating natural environment. Just imagine the toughness of the people who inhabited these parts. I don't know man, I really hope the audio is good. those nasty clouds get to us. They will get to us and then they will pass. Well, you know the weather is good when the rain doesn't come from the top but from the side.
village that is in just on the beach. So it, it, it resurfaced from under the sand in the 1960s. And so they found this Iron Age village complex. The story is very similar to the Orkney's Scarabra story at which the, the community, the, the settlement is right next to the sea and the over time sea erosion and wind erosion revealed the structures but this, this on the other hand, it's much later so they are considering, they are considering it to be Iron Age around 400 to 500 BC and inhabited by the, the, the so-called Pictish people uh, the sea levels increased dramatically since the last, uh, since the end of the last ice age. So we are talking that this sea level that is over there in the back, just 5,000 years ago, was 18 meters lower than currently. 10,000 years ago, it could have been easily up to like 50 meters lower. Don't take my words for it. Check for yourself. Because we never stop learning. Isn't that the case? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> oh my god. Crazy. Go into the water more. It's February. We are making our way to the Norse mill and kill. Encounter the Norse, man. Quite a sophisticated civilization. <laughs> the Norse mill's replica, a historical reconstruction of what uh, the Vikings might have used um, actually only a few centuries ago. Um, the Norse inhabited these islands as they did uh, quite large territories of Scotland and, and of course England and Wales perhaps. They came from the 600s. They started to settle around 700, 800, right in the middle of the Dark Ages and uh, they left their civilization and their imprint upon uh, these parts. Yeah, it has been a long day. I'm pretty tired to be honest. It's nice to listen to the little rivulet flowing just on the side of this, uh, of this structure. Uh, anyway, that's it from me in a Norse mill. was hoping to not find anyone around these stones and we are very lucky there is no one here at the moment so we're gonna do our best to just appreciate the place and the environment that we are finding ourselves in um, but I'm gonna try to record as much as I can
years that I first came across the Kalenj stones being mentioned in the book, finally I made my way to it. And I must tell you, there is nothing better than to finally fulfill a long dream of yours. Since the first time I heard about the Celts, uh, the first time I heard about the prehistoric past of, of the British Isles, I was filled with enthusiasm and, and, and my imagination was stoked up imagining those people, those civilization living back in the day. And finally, finally, I made my way to the Kalani stones. These, these rock formations, these megaliths, this stone circle, call it whatever you like it. There is nothing for me to say really about this because speculation is, is rich upon, upon this subject matter. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to, to actual functionality, actual knowledge about the people who built it and the culture in which it, in which it took a place, no one really knows. And so my endeavors are really just to come and experience these places for myself and, and hope for the best, hope for my, for my mind to sort of tap into the fabric of space-time and somehow unlock an element of that creative power that, that took place and that, and that influenced the builders of these structures. I am just very glad and grateful that I could finally visit this formation and, and that I have actual experience and, and visual memory of, of, of these stones for they take a very special place in my, in my human, human heart. As Madame Blavatsky once said, these megaliths are really just a sepulture of future civilizations to come, in which they will store the ashes of all our endeavors and all our undertakings, and they will be standing, standing millennia from now, and, and they will shine their mystery upon future civilizations. The prophecy is true, will come true in which the mind capable of understanding the richness of human potential will rise again and, and will bring to fruition a humankind capable of understanding the deeper secrets of the universe. But until then, the nomad eclectics will be continuing to visit sites and listen to stories, to myths and legends, and try to understand the creative spirit behind those legends and myths. Thank you.